Grace Lutheran Church. Thank you for worshiping with us this evening. We will be following the order of service. It is the service of word and sacrament, and it's found on page 26. Also, the Friendship Register is in each pew. Please take this opportunity to sign it, or if not right now, certainly before you leave. Members and visitors, please sign the Friendship Register. Our first hymn this evening is hymn 464. us from your love, 
and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil. Hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. <laughs> the works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Maintain justice in the courts. 
perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Joseph. This is the word of the Lord. We now join in singing Psalm number 90 on page 99 in the front pages of the hymn. salvation. 
Alleluia.
All right. I would have the children come up and ask them, what is this person? And hopefully, eventually, they would give me the answer as a soldier. Then I would ask them, who sends soldiers? And maybe it would be a little difficult, but they would come up eventually with the answer we do, our country does. Well, where do they go? Well, soldiers go into war and into battle. And the next question would be, what happens sometimes to some soldiers? Sometimes they're sacrificed and they die in battle. Well, just as that is true of a soldier, so it's true of Jesus. And so that's what we're going to do, is look at Jesus, who is a soldier sent and a soldier sacrificed. This picture is one of my sons. He did not die, we praise God for that, but he served in the Marine Corps and was in Afghanistan. We'll continue with the last verse of our hymn. Satan into this world. 
He was a soldier. A soldier who was the heavenly soldier. God the Son, Jesus. And that happened. He was commissioned and carried out his mission when he began it, when he came into this world on that first Christmas in Bethlehem. The mission began then. And he came into this world with one purpose, because he was on a mission for us, for you and me. Yes, sent into battle for us, you see, by the Heavenly Father. Well, we're supposed to fix our thoughts on Jesus, the one sent into this battle. Well, you should ask, why wouldn't we fix our eyes on Jesus? And all we need to do is look at our sinful nature, right? And look at the sinful ways of the world around us that want to pull us aside and have our eyes fixed not on Jesus, but our eyes and our thoughts fixed on the ways of the world. How true, isn't it, that all too often, as we heard in our reading, that when someone's privileged to be blessed with richness of money and possessions, they want more and more and more and are never happy. The world tells you and me to fix our eyes and our focus on money and wealth, <coughs> and it'll never satisfy us. Or sometimes people are encouraged to focus their sight and their thoughts on wisdom. And oh yes, learn as much as you can while you're alive in this life, of course. But don't ever think that it replaces your Lord and Savior. In other words, that you're so wise now that you don't need him anymore. Because you see, you maybe got a master's degree or maybe a doctor's degree and maybe even more education than all of that. And you don't need Jesus anymore. Or maybe it's the pleasures of life. Don't we all enjoy the things we can do in life that are experiences that bring us happiness and joy? And all too often we focus on that as the most important thing in our life. And when those pleasures are sinful, then they trap us, right? In the immorality, into drunkenness, into taking drugs, and on goes the list of the things that are sinful pleasures in life that when we suck into them, we get pulled in and it's so hard, it's almost impossible to get out. Those are things that this world and our sinful nature want us to focus on. But what God wants us to focus on is our Lord and Savior. In other words, when we say focus on him, what we really mean is what the first commandment says. The first commandment says, make God number one in your life. Not number two, not number three, or number ten, but make him number one over everything, anything, and everyone. That's what he's saying here. Fix Jesus, the one who came and was sent and commissioned to carry out a mission for you. Fix your thoughts on him. And you know what? The only way that will happen for me or any of you is one <coughs> night here tonight. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit that you're brought to faith in Jesus. And it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that you're able to cling in faith to Jesus. And it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that you're able to make him number one in your life. And focus on him first. Jesus is the greatest blessing that we have. And we want to focus on him. And the way we focus is through his word. You know, the Holy Spirit uses a tool to enable us to focus on Jesus. In other words, to cling firmly in faith to him. And that tool is the word of God. And that's why we have church and why you're here tonight. To hear the word of God read and preached to you. And the Word of God as it's taught in confirmation class and in Bible study on Sunday. And the Word of God that's used when you receive the Lord's Supper. All of that helps you focus on Jesus 
because the Holy Spirit will enable you to see he is your greatest treasure. He is number one. The story is told of a young woman who couldn't keep the baby that she had. She gave the baby up for adoption. The baby sat for a while in waiting for someone to adopt him. Eventually, a family came forward. And that baby that had really nothing was adopted by a family that had a salary that was seven figures. And when the papers were finally signed, that little baby that had nothing now became an heir of $20 million. If you think that's a great story, I'm here to remind you, you have an even greater story and blessing. That the Holy Spirit adopted you into God's family and enables you to cling firmly and make him number one. Because he has a greater treasure for you than $20 million. He has an eternity with him and the glories of eternal life in heaven forever. Oh, the greatest blessing of all. So focus on Jesus. And don't focus on the weak and frail things of this life. Yes, that's Jesus, the apostle, who was sent on a mission. And Bethlehem began that mission. Yes. Focus on the fallen soldier. First of all, that means remembering that we are blessed with the Savior Jesus because he sent for us. But secondly, it means he's sacrificed for us. He is a fallen soldier in this war with Satan. Now, that's the point made in the last, in, in two words of our text, high priest. What did that Old Testament priest do? Oh, the Old Testament priest took the sacrifices that the people brought and offered them to God. And when it was an animal, he slit that animal and he took the blood and he splashed the blood all over the altar. It was a bloody mess. But what a visual aid for those people that the Lamb of God's blood would be spilled to take away the sins of the people. <coughs> Jesus is our high priest. And what did he do? He sacrificed himself and shed his blood. Jesus' life was lived for you and for me and for us. A sinless holy life for us who don't have a sinless day. His blood was spilt and shed so that those sins could all be wiped clean in the blood that he, as the high priest and the sacrifice of the high priest, shed for you and me, for us. And ultimately, he died in the battle with Satan. And his death assures you and me that the punishment we should receive for our sins was placed on Jesus. That's why he died. But you see, he didn't stay dead, did he? He came alive and rose from the dead to assure us that he did the job of sacrifice for us. His life, his blood, and his death took our sins away. So, what about us forgiven, blood-bought people? We want to give back to him. Not to get forgiveness, but because you've got it. Not to get heaven, but because you have it. Given to you by God. And so you serve him. Your whole life is service and thankfulness to God. You come to church in thankfulness to God. Not because you are commanded to by anyone, but because you're motivated and empowered to 
in sacrificing your time to worship him because he sacrificed himself for you. And you put offerings in that collection plate because you have to? I hope you don't think that. Because you are compelled to when you remember that he sacrificed for you. Can we give back to him of the money that he gives us to start with in life? All his managers we are. And the talents we have that he's given us, we use in service to him. Why do we do all of these things? Things we could use for ourselves and yet sacrifice and give back to God out of thankfulness to him because he sacrificed himself for each of us to pay the debt, the debt that we all owe that none of us can ever repay on our own. And he paid it in full. It's like the story told of Henry Clay. Henry Clay was a senator and representative of the United States from the state of Kentucky in the first half of the 1800s. Henry Clay was a powerful politician and very influential in his day. But if you go back in the early history of Henry Clay in Kentucky, at one point in his life he owed the ba a bank in Kentucky $10,000 in that day. He didn't know how he was going to repay the money. So one day he went to the banker to talk to him about what they could arrange for payments. When he got into the banker's office, the banker said, your debt has been paid in full. You owe nothing to this bank. What, Henry Clay said? How can that be? I owe you $10,000. The banker said to Henry Clay, your friends got together and knew that you could not pay your bill, and they paid your $10,000 bill in full. You do not owe one cent. And Henry Clay began to cry like a baby. God has paid my debt and your debt in full. And we should cry like a baby in thankfulness to him as we worship him, as we use the talents and service to him that he's given us. And the money that's he's blessed us with as we give back in thankfulness to him. And as we dedicate our whole life by fixing our thoughts, our eyes, our sight on Jesus. Oh, yes. <coughs> it's like a hymn we're going to sing. Let me read to you the first and the last verses. I gave my life for thee. My precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom me and quicken from the dead. I gave my life for thee. Come, give thyself to me. O oh, let thy life be spent, thy years for me be given, as I for thee was sent to bear the home you home to heaven. I gave my life for thee. Come, give thy life to me. Yes. Focus on the fallen soldier risen from the dead. Yes. Focus on him, because he was sent for us and sacrificed for us. Amen. Please stand. <clears throat> May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray a few special prayers this evening. We pray a special prayer for Kelly, her husband, and her two small children who have been, Kelly has been hospitalized with COVID and her family has all tested positive. We also pray a special prayer for Carolyn Lem Lemke. Lemke, who is now receiving hospice care as well as Alan. And we pray a special prayer for the pastor you have called. We pray. Oh, loving Lord, you are the great physician of body and soul. We ask you to be with these individuals dealing with COVID, testing positive, hospice care, and other things. Comfort them with the assurance that you will take care of them in the wisest way. Be with their loved ones. Guide and direct them and comfort them that you know what's best and you will take care of them in the way that's best. Lord, comfort them in their time of sickness, and according to your wise, willing way, restore them to better health and good strength. And then, O oh, loving Lord, we've called our fourth pastor. May this be the one that you see fit to send to our midst. Lord, guide and direct him to make a decision that suits the needs of the church. But Lord, we can't help but ask, may it be your will and his will, that he's guided and directed to come here to Cribbs and serve the people with love and care here at Grace. Lord, may that be the result and the guidance that the Holy Spirit gives you. In your name we pray, amen. And then, O oh, loving Lord, yes, <coughs> our Savior is the fallen soldier for us. He came into this world for each one of us, <coughs> hearing on a mission in a battle with Satan, and ultimately lost his life because of it, but rose from the dead, Oh, Lord, help me to remember what it means for me that because of his life, blood, and death, I have forgiveness. He sacrificed himself for me in this battle. And ultimately, he won the victory by rising from the grave. The victory is mine. The battle he won, all done for me. Lord, may I give thanks to you in the way I live, the way I give, and the way I serve, and in all of my life, because you paid my debt. In your name we pray, amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the order of Holy Communion. Please remember that <coughs> communion gives a special blessing to those who receive it. <coughs> the scripture also tells us communion is a statement of unity in what we believe and teach. Therefore, we ask that those who are Wisconsin Synod members or ELS members come forward for the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. <laughs> Who have received 
in his true body and blood, the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. <clears throat> Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile on you with his favor and give you his peace.
can quickly move forward with the important work which the Lord of the Church has entrusted to us, the work of proclaiming the crucified and risen Christ in word and sacrament to their communities. I ask you to keep me and my wife, Angela, and my three children, Anna, Molly, and Silas, in your prayers, along with your church and the church in Lee Summit, as I deliberate these two calls. I can promise you that your brothers and sisters in Lee Summit are doing the same thing. If you have any questions or comments for me at any time, please feel free to get in touch with me at any time. In Christ, Pastor Dan Fry from Lee Summit, Missouri. We did pray. We prayed for him, for our congregation. I guess it's sort of a selfish prayer, but we prayed that the Lord would lead him to come. And that's why we called him. We hope that is the end result. Thank you for being very patient. May the Lord be with us all until we meet again.